Thank you for coming back for another amazing episode of WCU. We have a very important topic to discuss today. We couldn't end our series about the three keys to cinematic storytelling without this very important part of the process. Audio. Capturing great audio is vitally important to creating an amazing film. Using lines from ceremony, speeches, vows, and other emotional moments of the day can help you tell a better story. For a highlight film, these spoken words can set up the structure for the film and make it unique to every couple. Audio captivates your audience, changes the mood, structures your story, and greatly increases your production value. When you watch a film, you do so with your eyes and ears, which means 50% of the experience while watching a film is done with the actual footage and 50% is the audio. Bad audio can be a significant distraction and take away from your story. So it's really important to get this key on lock. There are many parts of the day that we use audio, specifically letter readings, first look, ceremony, and reception. You will definitely want to have a game plan for capturing audio when the main focus is on someone who is speaking. Prior to the wedding, take note of different points throughout the day when audio will be needed. Make sure that the couple knows when and where you'll be using these microphones. You can also communicate with the DJ before the wedding day to ensure they will have an available output for you to connect to. Welcome back to Wedding Crashers University. In this week's episode, we're learning about audio. On the wedding day, make sure to set up audio and mic the speakers 10 to 15 minutes before the event starts. We use several pieces of equipment to make sure we're capturing clean audio throughout the entire day. These include lavalier mics, an audio recorder, and a set of audio cables to tap into an audio mixer used by the DJ or venue. These are our recommendations that we have relied on for years. Combined, this equipment will cost you around $1,000 total. The knowledge is free, but unfortunately, equipment is not included. Aww. 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 First, let's talk about lavalier mics. Lav mics are small, discreet microphones that you can easily clip onto your subject if they're wearing a suit coat or button-down shirt. A popular choice is the Tascam DR-10L, and for several reasons, we cannot recommend this mic enough. In addition to its small form factor and simple design, the DR-10L records audio locally to a micro SD card in the receiver. This ensures you won't have any issues with a wireless feed to your camera, which is essential during these important once-in-a-lifetime moments. Other features like two-track recording, 15-minute recording intervals, and auto-leveling audio makes them a great safe option that you can use right out of the box. Just put in your AAA batteries and a micro SD card under 32 gigabytes, and you're good to go. These have been a wedding go-to for us for years. The next piece we use on every wedding day is the Zoom H6 audio recorder. An audio recorder is absolutely necessary to capturing clean audio and can be used to tap into a DJ's audio mixer or speaker during a ceremony and reception. The onboard microphone can be used to capture letter readings or any moment you might need to capture in a pinch. In order to use this recorder with a DJ system, you'll also need a few cables to tap into an audio output. We like to keep an XLR quarter inch and an RCA cable in our kit at all times. Having all three gives us flexibility and allows us to tap into almost any system. The brand we use is Mogami, and we recommend buying all three of these cables. Now we'll pass it off to AG for a quick demo on how we use this equipment on a wedding day. So now I'm gonna show you guys the Tascam DR-10L and how to properly mic up your subject. Ben, step in. Cool. So, little hack I like to do, don't even turn it on by going down. You just hold up and your device will power on and it will start recording right away. So I always wrap this up and then I'm going to politely ask my subject, make sure you leave first, make sure you leave enough room and then I'm going to politely ask my subject, may I make you up and do you have room in this pocket? I do indeed. Okay, so you're going to put the lav mic in there. You're gonna do this loop here. So I'll show you guys that. Um, you can relax, there we go. And then something very important. First, make sure that 
the wire is clipped to his suit so that it doesn't pull out. Also, make sure you don't have far too much slack like this because it doesn't look right. You're gonna shove it right back in there. There you go. And make sure your lav mic is pointing towards the subject's mouth. Go ahead and button that up. Cool. And make sure it looks good. Make sure there's no wire popping out because that is gonna be distracting. And that's how you lav up your subject. Wait, do you hear that? Do you yeah. Hear, yeah, what is that? I don't know, that's rare. I'll go, let me go talk to him. Can you hold this? Yeah. Testing one, two, three, here I go. Give me that microphone. Do you guys mind if I tap in your audio system? Yeah, sure, come on over. <laughs> so now we're gonna be talking about how to tap into a DJ system. You'll want to do this for both the ceremony and reception. This is extremely nice because it will capture essentially everything that's coming out of these speakers. And this includes any music that's used during both the processional and the recessional during the grand march, as well as any speakers that talk during speeches or during the ceremony. So we have a few pieces of equipment with us. We're gonna head back and we're gonna show you exactly how to use this equipment to tap into a DJ system. Well, first things first, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to check with your DJ to make sure it's okay to tap into their audio system. Is it okay if I tap into your audio system? Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. One of the things that you're always gonna to wanna to do is try to tap into the mixer itself. If that doesn't work, there's usually an XLR output or maybe even a quarter inch output on the speaker as well. But if you have the choice, always try to tap into the soundboard itself for just a slightly cleaner feed that may have a little less noise, a little less feedback for your audio. We have a few outputs here on the mixer. We have both the quarter inch and the RCA outputs. So the RCA is this cable right here. It's typically labeled as a tape out on the mixer. And so we can see that right here. It doesn't really matter whether you tap into the right or left channel considering we only have one input anyways. So you'll choose your very favorite and plug that in right there. And then on the H6 itself, you can see we have a few inputs on the side. So this is an RCA to XLR, and we'll plug in that XLR right here, right on the side. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your H6 or your audio recorder is on. And the other thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that you have a pair of headphones that you can monitor your audio. I typically don't use headphones this large on a wedding day. Um, I usually just bring a small, tiny pair of earbuds that I can monitor audio quickly and it easily fits in a bag, which is fantastic. After everything is set up as you think it's supposed to be, ask the DJ to do a quick mic check. The reason we keep our headphones on is to make sure that there's no weird buzzing, no weird hissing that might be coming out of your feed. Um, and just make sure that your audio is as clean as possible. So do you guys want to run a quick yeah. mic check real quick? Check one. Check one, check two. Check, 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 check. Sounds good. Another important thing I should mention here is that you should always make sure that at the very loudest, your audio isn't peaking much more than negative 12 decibels in your recorder. If it does end up peaking, that audio is essentially garbage and you won't be able to use it for your edit. Um, so just make sure, even as the event is going on, check in periodically, make sure your levels are still good, make sure you're still getting a clean feed, and that will ensure that throughout the entire day, you're getting super clean audio from the DJ's system. So thank you guys so much for coming to this audio demo for Wedding Crashers University. Also want to give a huge shout out to our DJs. We got Caden, we got Noah. Thank you guys both so much for popping out. Let's get this party started. <laughs> I'll see you guys after the party. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh my God. Thanks for tuning in and learning about the importance of audio. 
Getting clear audio is vital to cinematic success. And we hope this episode was able to provide some insight on how we capture audio on a wedding day. Try to implement this key on your next project. In an upcoming series, we'll talk more about how to incorporate this audio into your films to help drive your story. Make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button before you go. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you next week on Wedding Crashers University. Class is dismissed.